Mexico City, home to 20 million people, most of them Catholics. The church forbids any dealings with witchcraft, saying it's the work of the devil. But for many Mexicans, the allure of magic, both good and evil, is irresistible. Believers find the tools of witchcraft at the Sonora Witches Market. This is a this is a Afro-Caribbean. Anthropologist Anthony Zavaleta has studied the market for 25 years. In every cranny of this maze, brujas, or witch doctors, peddle their cures. It's a market for even the most gruesome wares. Along with goods, the market provides services. In back rooms behind the stalls, nearly anything is possible. Spells can be cast or lifted. Customers can have their spirits cleansed or engage in satanic rites. It's all here. Curses fly, powered by wing of bat and tongue of pig. Witches bind hexes in black ribbon, ready for burial in a human grave. Curses like these are all too familiar to Dr. Zavaleta. As part of his research, Zavaleta has been studying with Alberto Salinas, a healer who's come all the way from Texas. Alberto is here to restock his hex fighting kit. Belief in witchcraft was just an abstract idea for Dr. Zavaleta until he had his own life-changing encounter with black magic. Zavaleta was traveling with Alberto and other healers on a mission. What we found and what we saw that day was just unbelievable. In 30 years of research, uh, field research uh, into brujería and curanderismo, and I had never encountered anything like that and probably never will again. They came to a site where black magic was rumored to take place. Dr. Zavaleta videotaped the events that followed. Show it up here, Alberto. What is it, Alberto? Oh my God. The healers had come upon nearly a hundred objects, buried as part of a hexing ritual. My God, look at that. That's unbelievable. Oh, oh, hold it up for me. My God. This is casting a spell over someone. This is got the garlic that somebody used to clean themselves. They put the, some a belonging of the person that they want to cast a spell over. This is this is all. Most of it is black magic, though. Is it evil? Most of it is evil. Just the 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 sense and the feeling uh, that I had of the 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 people, uh, men, women, children who were captured. And so to speak, in those objects that are intended to, dis to, to break up marriages or break up relationships or to bring people together or, or more nefariously to kill people and end people's lives. And that was a horrible thing. Jeez. The healers felt they had to take action and quickly. For Alberto, the mission suddenly turned extremely dangerous. When you break spells and evil spirits are concerned, you are in danger. You're going into somebody's territory, somebody's domain. It's obvious that if these people happen to find out that you've gone and destroyed something they've done, then they may try to do something to you. I became physically ill. I became, I was ill. Uh, and everybody felt badly in one way or another. With so much evil concentrated in one place, the healers felt their spirits were in jeopardy. Dr. Zavaleta suspended his disbelief and agreed to be cleansed. A limpia, to use the Spanish word, a ritual sweeping and a cleansing to have whatever might have attached itself to us to take it off of us, and hence 
make us whole and put us back together. His experience that day, in that place, pushed aside science and challenged his beliefs. The effect, whether real or imagined, was, was very real on me. And of course, uh, an imagined effect or uh, psychologically and emotionally induced effect that produces physiological change is valid and it's real. But I've seen many things that I simply cannot explain. Dr. Zavaleta's story is not uncommon. Science doesn't always conquer the supernatural. And for those who believe, witchcraft is all too real.